welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa, this is Ripley, and I like to talk about books and book design. I just made my fall TBR for the year, but I thought I would give some more fall recommendations just in case you weren't quite settled on what you want to read this season. Today I have 10 books for you that I think are perfect for fall and I have them divided up in five categories. So that means you get two books per category. Hopefully there's a little something for everyone. I'm gonna put chapters down here. So if you wanna skip to the category that you're most interested in, feel free to do so or watch the whole video. I don't know. You might find something you didn't know you needed. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the book that inspired me to make this video because I actually just read it and I think it was the perfect kickoff for fall and that would be Carmilla. Carmilla is the perfect bite-sized novella to get you going with your fall reading. If you're not familiar, Carmilla is a vampire story. It's actually the vampire story that inspired Dracula. This one came first. But the fun thing about this is that the vampire in it, Carmilla, is a woman and there is a female love interest. This one is literally fresh off the dome, but I feel like I need to do some more like research into Sheridan Le Fanu and just like figure out more about the history of this because all I really know is that it was published serially like in a newspaper or something. I think this one just has the perfect gothic horror vibes. After reading this, I can see so many books that have nodded towards this. It was just such a joy to read and Carmilla will be featured in my vampire reading vlog which should be coming out in probably two weeks or so. So keep an eye out for that. The next one would be The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Like Carmilla, this is a novella, but rather than a vampire story, it is a ghost story. The Turn of the Screw follows this governess who starts working at an estate, watching over these two kids, Miles and Flora. But everything is not as it may seem. It seems the estate is being haunted. I don't want to say much more than that to give it away, but I think an important note is that the two kids are kind of chill with the haunting. They're not that worried about it, but the governess is. And so this creates some drama within the household. I thought it was fun. <laughs> the two I'm gonna talk about have very different vibes, but I think they're both good for fall. So the first one is a little bit more on the nose and that would be A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, but this book is in fact perfect for fall. We have witches, we have demons, we have a magical small town, and there's also other magical creatures within the town like pixies and werewolves, mermaids. But what really gets me is the town in this book. Even with all its like magical creatures, it has such a Gilmore Girls vibe to it. Very stars hollow. The witch in the story is prophesied to be this great and powerful witch, but she's just not very good at magic. What she is good at is plants and gardening, and she uses her magic to like communicate with the plants. The other witches in her family don't see this as like a very powerful skill. While practicing her magic, she accidentally summons a demon. The thing about demons is that they will not go away until they convince you to give them your soul. Our main character is stuck with this demon following her around and she has to kind of explain him away, hence the fake dating scenario. That being said, this is a perfect book for the fall. The next romance book is for those of you who just wanna curl up, get cozy, and cry. Yep, yes indeed. This one is so sad. A Walk to Remember by Nicholas Sparks. Kind of, kind of random. I'm really not a Nicholas Sparks girly. You know, I think The Notebook's pretty okay. Usually the movies are better. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, in this case, I do still think the movie is better here, but the book's good too. I would just advise reading the book and then watching the movie. But A Walk to Remember is sort of your classic bad guy, good girl story. It follows bad boy Landon and good girl Jamie who end up going to their school dance together. Jamie is like the preacher's daughter. She's the quiet girl in school. She just doesn't really fit in. But Landon quickly figures out there's more to her than meets the eye and a very beautiful romance blooms from there. Not gonna say more than that, but just make sure you get your tissues when you read this one because yeah you're gonna need them. Our next category is one that I never thought I would be making, but I had a change of heart in the past few years, and that is 
mystery. I always thought I didn't like mystery stories. Now don't get me wrong, I love a book with mystery. I feel like every book needs mystery. That's kind of what gets the plot going. But I, I've had trouble with strictly mystery in the past because I just thought of them as being boring. Usually they're focused a little bit too much on the plot and making sure you don't see all the twists and turns that the characters kind of get left behind. And I just really don't enjoy books where the characters aren't strong. I had to take a mystery writing class in college and I was like, bummer. <laughs> Cause I really thought I didn't like mysteries, but this class changed my mind because it introduced me to some really good books. One of them being Motherless Brooklyn. Motherless Brooklyn is a really unique noir detective story that follows this guy named Lionel. And Lionel is a unique character in that he grows up as an orphan. He lives in this home for boys and he's taken in by this guy named Frank who is a mobster and that's kind of the life he gets into. But also he has Tourette's, which sometimes makes it really hard for him to be a detective for a few different reasons. Sometimes it makes it hard for him to stay hidden or to not give some of himself away in the sort of questioning aspect of things, but it makes him a really unique voice. And it's interesting to see how the sort of hindrances that comes with Tourette's actually ends up helping him in the story. So the story is sort of kicked off by this man, Frank, who has taken Lionel and these other boys into his home and made them a part of his crew. He has died, someone murdered him. So the whole book is Lionel trying to figure out this murder and he goes on a really interesting journey and just a lot of, you know, twists and turns. This book completely went against my expectations of the genre because Lionel is such a strong character in this book. He's just interesting to read, but also his like deep care for these people, especially Frank, who he's trying to sort of get justice for, made the narrative just really compelling and I loved it a lot. If you're looking to get into that sort of genre, I think this is an excellent place to start. Now, the other one I didn't read in that mystery class, but I was sort of introduced to it through that class and that would be Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith. I love Patricia Highsmith. I think she is a fantastic writer. The story follows these two men who are, you guessed it, on a train. This man named Guy and this other guy named Bruno. And they sort of come up with this crazy plan that Bruno will murder Guy's wife and Guy will murder Bruno's father. It seems to be the perfect crime because they are in fact strangers on a train. So who would suspect them of committing the crime because they have no relation to each other at all. But the thing about this is that Bruno is a lot more into this plan than Guy is. So Guy sort of gets sucked into this crazy guy's sadistic plan. And you kind of just have to read it to see how it all unfolds. It's a good one. <laughs> Now, I know I already talked about Carmilla, but one thing about me is that I love a vampire novel. I have two more to recommend you, basically. The first one I'm sure you've heard of before because it's quite popular on booktube and booktalk, but it really is just the perfect fall read, so I couldn't not recommend it. And that would be The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. If you haven't read Grady Hendrix yet, you absolutely need to because he's just really great at what he does. He writes these horror novels that are really more so comedy than horror. I think if you're someone who's like really afraid or kind of off put by horror, Grady Hendrix is a good place to start because it is so funny that I don't think it would actually scare you. And if you're someone who, like me who really enjoys horror, it's just like a nice taste of the genre in a different light. Now, what can I say about this book other than it is a hoot and a holler? <laughs> it follows this group of women in a suburban community that meet together for book club and if I remember correctly, it starts off being very stereotypical, like maybe they're bringing romance books to read, but I think they eventually all realize that what they actually want to be reading is true crime. And suddenly something is happening in their area that kind of perks up their attention. It's that a lot of the local kids are going missing. So our main character is Patricia. She is very unhappy in her marriage. Her kids are ungrateful and she's obsessed with true crime. So what does Patricia do? She gets herself way too involved in in this case of the missing kids. And wouldn't you know it, there's this new stranger in town who seems to have the trait of a vampire. Now, if you're looking for one that is more of the kind of 
paranormal romance vibe. Mm, I got you. This is gonna be a bold statement. I think this is my favorite vampire book. Mm, I do think that. And that would be The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. If you're not new here, then you know I love Holly Black. The Cruel Prince and that series is just my absolute favorite. And wouldn't you know it, I love this one too. I think this book is such a unique take on the vampire trope genre, whatever you want to call it. It came out in like 2014 or something alongside the like, you know, the books of that time, like The Hunger Games and all that. The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. It's set in this world where vampires have been made known to the public and it's sort of looked at like a virus or disease that's being spread. If you are bitten, then that's known as going cold. And so they create these things called cold towns and that's where they send the vampires to go and live. Or if you're bitten, but you haven't been turned yet then you're supposed to go to the cold town but the thing about that is that the cold town also attracts a lot of like runaway teenagers who think it's really cool to be immortal and all that our main character tana is not like that she is a teenage girl who has been affected by this sort of vampire virus i don't want to say too much but it has affected her family in some way and so she is 100 not on that boat she does not want to be a vampire they have these things called sundown parties where it's like the vampires come out out when the sun goes down but but at the party everyone goes inside and they lock all the windows and doors so it's supposed to be safe when tana wakes up in the morning everyone at this party has been murdered except for tana her ex-boyfriend and this mysterious guy who's chained in the corner some things happen that lead to them having to go to a cold town the romance in here Holly Black just knows how to do it. Like she, she got me good. She always does. It's so good. I am someone who really enjoys a slow burn. This one is a slow burn. So that is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. How could I make this video without talking about some horror books? It was hard to pick just two. I went with my gut and <laughs> would you believe it? One of them is a vampire novel, okay? <laughs> and that is gonna be let me in. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's one of the scariest books I've ever read. It is really disturbing. If you've seen the movie that was inspired by this book, you might not agree. I like the movie, it's pretty good, but it is nowhere near as disturbing as the book is. It was the first book I remember reading where I like truly felt dread turning the page because I knew something awful was about to happen and it was just like, <sighs> if you're looking to experience that, I recommend, but please look up the trigger warnings for this one because there are some pretty disturbing things in here. As I said, it is a vampire novel, but it is a scary one. I feel like today we often think of vampires more in the romance context. We sort of forget the vampires are a horror creature. I love to be reminded of that. And the other thing that's interesting is that our vampire is this 12 year old girl. The story more so follows this little boy who lives in an apartment complex. He's also like, 12. He is being relentlessly bullied at school. He doesn't really have any friends. Kid, he has this weird obsession with murder. And then this little girl moves in next door. He quickly realizes that there's something not quite right about her. She only comes out at night. There's a quote on the back that I feel like really just sums up my feelings about it. And that is, a must for vampire fans, even those who think they've seen it all. This is really a unique vampire story. If you haven't read it yet, I think you should give it a shot. And last, but certainly not least, is the horror book that I think has scared me the most, more so than Let Me In, and that would be The Troop. You've probably all heard of this one, but I just wanted to put it in front of your face again in case you haven't given it the chance yet, because trust me, it is so good. I think you'll really find it scary if like me, you are afraid of bugs. We are rapidly approaching the sort of one year mark of my booktube channel being active. That first video I made a year ago was my fall TBR. And at the time I was reading The Troop, I'm pretty sure I said then that this book gave me strong Stephen King vibes. Nick Cutter was very obviously influenced by Stephen King, but I am a Stephen King enjoyer. And one thing I really enjoy from King is the way he writes kids. I think he just knows how to make them very interesting and very complex. And Nick Cutter studied from the school of Stephen Kingology and he passed half a class, I don't know. All you need to know 
is that it follows a Boy Scout troop. They are stranded on this little island for what is supposed to be a wilderness expedition, but their trip is sort of ruined when an unexpected stranger shows up to this island. Get ready. Get ready to not be able to eat certain foods for like mm, two to three months. And that's how you know, it has a lasting impact. It is truly phenomenal. And those are the 10 books I think you should read this fall. Please let me know if you have already read any of them, what you thought of them or if there's one in particular you're hoping to pick up, I would love to know. Let's chat about it. You and me, let's chat. And that is all I have for us. I hope you are having a very spooky fall season so far. I hope you are picking up the coziest books and enjoying the weather getting a little bit more crisp. With that, I am signing off and I hope I will see you in the next one.